the two jobs every estate agent should master. Today, I'm joined by Jason Cannon, who is an estate agency coach extraordinaire. Jason, what are those two jobs? Talk to me. Thank you, Chris. Number one is creating competition. Creating competition for your seller's biggest asset. If you don't understand how to do that and you're just following the principle of the three P's, put a property on the market, put a board up and pray, and there's no proactive marketing, you don't understand how to create competition, then you're not a premium agent in my, in my view. I'll whack it on right move and see how we get on. Absolutely, yeah. And we know that more and more properties now are being sold without using portals. Um, I don't have any data on that, so you can perhaps educate me on that piece. But we know that there is property that's selling using other channels. We know that those agents that are proactively marketing a listing, a home, uh, are are having you know having a reasonable amount of success. But the important you know go back to the the how do you create competition for that asset, and what is it you do? Is it just a case of you're going to put it on the market and pray, or are you going to do some canvassing, some local marketing, some door knocking? Are you going to do, use an open house? Are you going to use professional photography, videography? Um, are you going to go and knock on the neighbours' doors and say, open house on these days, got this one coming to the market. Who do you know that would be interested in it? Some targeted marketing. Does sound like hard work, mate? Um, no, if it's systemised and you're working with a motivated client and you're getting your pricing strategy right. And therefore you should have a decent fee because you've proved it. Yeah. Um, then you know, there's, a, there's an expression that anyone can sell a property, but not everyone can sell it for a premium price. Those are the agents that surely we want our clients to work with. Those agents that are skilled, they're professional. They're not order takers. They're not simply pressing a button so it goes on right move Zooka and other portals they're actually they understand how to create competition they understand how to create a fear of missing out how to find those 15 20 percent of buyers the emotional purchasers you know looking at that pricing triangle and saying you know the bottom is the investors the middle part is your is your average buyers and the top five percent ten percent fifteen percent uh, are the ones that we want to attract to come into our open houses to come and do our you know block viewings so creating competition massively underused second job negotiation okay we've spoken about this before yeah we'll just expand on that for, for for everyone if you can establish how how the best negotiate in in every situation so you've obviously got your you know I know it's a, it's a passion of Perry Powers. Um, it's a passion of Stephen Brown's. It's having that client focus. This is your biggest asset. This is our biggest opportunity to maximize the value of that asset. And are you, are you a master at negotiation or are you just literally what you offering? How much do you want to pay? Oh, nearly, which I hear quite a lot. Oh, nearly. What do you mean by that? Well, an agent will take a call and someone will say, well, you're, it's on the market at five. Um, I'll offer four, seven, five. And the negotiator says, oh, nearly, almost, which, which, is, which is a weak way of doing it. So, you know, we've established that there's very little coaching, training. Hmm. And we talked about in a previous video, which please do check out, the, the eight watts to get more listings. And in that is the questions you ask before the negotiations yeah. start. Yeah. Because the negotiations start when they first register with you, which then you can use in your, to your advantage when you are negotiating. Yes. Yeah. You, you know, in, in simple terms, you, you have a common goal, don't you, as the agent and as the buyer or as a potential buyer. Um, a buyer has two prices, the price they'd like to pay and the price they will pay. Your job as a skilled agent is to find out the latter. A seller has two prices, the price they'd like to pay you to sell their home and the price they will pay for you to sell their home. 
So how much time are you spending each week on learning to be a master negotiator? Considering there's probably only eight or nine estate agency coaches in the UK covering 14,000 estate agents, excluding the top 50. Yep. I doubt very much. Yeah. No wonder we're an industry and not a profession. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the unprofessional businesses will say it doesn't matter. We're, we're listing agents. We don't, we're not that bothered about it. We want market share. We just want to put as much on the market as we can. And we know that we'll sell, you know, X, yep. X percent of that, 38 percent or whatever it is, 40 percent. Um, and, and I think one of the one of the things that, you know, I love about being part of this industry now is the rise of those entrepreneurial startup agents, you know, the small limited company agents that understand that it's not about making an extra 50 quid if they'd get the price up by X. It, there is a big impact on them, isn't there? Indeed, because yeah. if you're taking the whole fee, then uh, or 70% of it, if you're one of these self-employed models, yeah. makes a huge difference. It does. It does. So, you know, how much of your time are you spending on mastering negotiation? Who are you listening to? Who are you talking to? How much time are you spent practicing it? You know, don't practice on your clients because that will cost you money. <laughs> practice with role play with your colleagues and trainers and yeah. coaches. Yeah. Understand the psychology of negotiation. What is it you want to get out of that? relationship with your client is it you know is there a lifetime value in that then utilize that this this is on average how much i negotiate for my clients first offer versus asking price yeah and if you're working on their onward purchase as well this is on average how much i save my clients so i've saved my client this money on their own purchase and i've also made them this extra money on their on their sale so it's irrelevant your extra half a percent because you yeah, why aren't you charging 3% based on your results? <laughs> Thank you for your time today, Jason. Thank you, Chris.